A function is concave up if the slopes are increasing. So concavity is talking about the second derivative, so y prime prime. <laughs> okay. So if we have this graph here, the graph is increasing, right? The slopes are all positive everywhere. Okay, but this is concave down because look at this slope. Maybe that's like 9. This slope right here, it's like 1 maybe. The slopes are getting smaller. So this is a concave down graph. Okay, concave up, concave down. It doesn't care whether you're increasing or decreasing. It's talking about how fast are your slopes changing. Um, so here's, do, 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 do. let's do another graph. This graph is decreasing, right? And the slopes are getting smaller and smaller. So it's uh, this is like a negative 1 slope, negative 2, negative 4. So the slopes are getting smaller and smaller. So this is concave down, what I just drew. But look, another graph that's also decreasing. But now it's concave up. Because look at this slope. This slope is like what? Negative 4. This slope is like negative 2, negative 1. The slopes are getting bigger. So this is a concave up graph. <clears throat> Even though it's decreasing, it's concave up. Because concavity doesn't care whether it's increasing or decreasing. It's talking about how fast those slopes are changing. Is the second derivative positive or negative? So uh, a quick and formal definition using mathematical notation. This is concave up, where the second derivative is greater than 0. So for both these problems, you might have already guessed it, but we want the second derivative. So this is negative 4 x to the third plus 12 x squared minus 4. And then the second derivative is negative 12 x squared plus 24 x. Okay. And then we, or for concavity, we're trying to check whether it's concave up or concave down. So we want to set it equal to 0 because that's the potential place where it could switch from concave up and concave down. And by the way, if you switch concavity at a certain location on the x-axis, that's called an inflection point. If you go from concave up to concave down, then you have an inflection point. But I think that comes up later in our problem set. Uh, so we have the second derivative. We set it equal to 0. It's quadratic, so let's solve by factoring. I'll factor out a negative 12x from everything. Factor down negative, so that's now x minus 2. And so we set each, each factor piece equal to 0, and we've got x equals 0 and x equals 2. So those are the potential places where it could switch concavity. Okay, But we want to check to make sure that it actually switches. Just like critical points are not guaranteed to be maxes or mins, same thing with these potential inflection points, where the second derivative equals 0. So you want to check and see what's happening to the left and to the right of them. Um, okay, so we got the second derivative, and we want to know where the second derivative is negative. So that's why I'm going to be plugging values into this second derivative, not the original function. You might remember that from uh, critical points. But we're just plugging numbers into the second derivative. At x equals 0, uh, actually, we, we really just care about to the left and to the right. We're not going to plug in x equals 0 because we want to know whether we're changing from uh, concave up to concave down or vice versa. So look, we'll test x equals negative 1. If you plug that into the second derivative, this is going to be negative 12 subtracted by 24, so this is negative 36. So it's concave down, right? We really don't care about the number. We just want to know what, what the second derivative is doing. It's, the second derivative is negative when I plug in negative 1 into the, the second derivative. So it's concave down to the left of this potential inflection point. And now let's check something between 0 and one, uh, zero and 2. So I'll check x equals 1. If I plug 1 in here, negative 12 plus 24 is a, is a positive 12. So x equals 0, that is an inflection point. Okay. And then uh, the only places where it could change concavity are here at these potential inflection points. So at x equals 0, that switches from concave down to concave up. And everything over here is going to be concave down because we have all the potential inflection points labeled. And so we want to check something to the right of 2. Let's plug in x equals 3. If you plug in 3 in here, um, 3, sorry, that's 9 times 12. That makes negative 108. Okay, so 24 times 3 plus 108, that's negative 36. So that's negative over here. Okay, so everywhere to the right of this inflection point, here's our two barriers, it's concave down. Okay. So to answer the question, where is it concave up? 
It's everywhere where the second derivative is positive, so it looks like it's only concave up between 0 and 2, between those two inflection points, because that's where it's positive. Where is it concave down? It's concave down from negative infinity to negative, oh, sorry, to 0, because that was our inflection point, right up to 0, and then starting again from our other inflection point from 2 to positive infinity, because that's where the second derivative is negative. Okay, now we're done. <clears throat> So same thing with this one. Take a first derivative, so that's negative one-third x to the negative two-thirds. We'll keep it in that form because we want a second derivative. You can use the power rule. So negative two-thirds comes down and multiplies, so this is two-ninths, and this is x to the negative five-thirds. Okay. And so, in other words, that's two over nine x to the five-thirds. Okay, so we want to set it equal to zero, just like we did over here. It's similar to what we do with critical points, but not the same because we're talking about second derivatives. Um, okay, with inflection point, same rule though. You want to set it equal to zero, and wherever the, der the second derivative equals zero, or wherever the second derivative fails to exist, are potential inflection points. So x equals zero is a point we want to analyze. And if you try to solve this equation, you can multiply x to the five thirds to the both sides but now you get a, a not true statement, right? So there's only one potential inflection point, x equals zero. So let's check the concavity to the left and to the right at this point. So if I plug negative one into the second derivative, so I immediately start taking out a calculator, but I thought I should show you to do this without a calculator, like this weird 5 thirds powers. You want to rewrite it in terms of something you do understand. Like, isn't this the same thing? because the power of x up top is one-third. That's what the, the radical one-third means. Oh, sorry, there should be a three there, radical three there. That's a one-third power divided by x to the second. So one-third minus two makes negative five-thirds, which is the same thing we have up here. And if you plug negative one in here, the cube root of negative one, that is possible. That's negative one. And if you plug in negative one down here, negative one squared makes positive one. So we get a negative value. Remember, we don't really care about the number. We're just wondering about concavity. Concavity is negative to the left of this potential inflection point. Then we want to do the same thing, plug in 1, but you should get a positive number. So everything to the right of 0 is concave up. Everything to the left is concave down. Remember, again, these are second derivatives. They're negative, so that means concave down. Switch is right here. So to answer their question, we'd use the interval negative infinity. I'll write it. It's down from negative infinity to zero, and then it's up from zero to positive infinity.